Hi there Scorpio, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for January and welcome to the new year. In recent years we've all been affected by a tight right angle between Uranus, the planet of radical change and revolution, and Pluto, your co-ruler, the planet of transformation, of deep truths. And that for you has been the source of a certain amount of tension, certainly around your ideas. You can be a very passionate person about the things that you believe in and very blunt sometimes about expressing your ideas. People do have this uh, idea that you can be quite secretive. Well, you can be quite private about your own internal world, but when it comes to the things that you're going to debate or talk to others about or engage with people about, well, no, you can be very forthright. And this angle with Uranus has perhaps seen you having lots of ideas, thoughts, perhaps around the structure of your life, your work, but it's all created quite a lot of tension. It's not necessarily been easy to bear. Well, that energy is buzzing around you as this new year begins, and it's going to be a backdrop for the first three months of 2016. The great news, however, Scorpio, is then it comes to an end in this particular major phase. And it's something I do feel that you can breathe a sigh of relief around. Because you may not have appreciated it, but perhaps you've been defending positions that in some ways are rather entrenched, traditional, conservative, even if you don't see yourself like that at all. That may be how other people see you. They may feel that you've actually been quite prickly or difficult to deal with. And as this new year begins, well, Mars, your other ruling planet, your traditional ruling planet, that's going to hustle its way into a new sector as soon as the fourth. And that sector is your sign. And that's going to be particularly helpful for you. But it does have some challenges too. It's been working its way through the previous six weeks in a very psychological area, which may have seen your mood very up and down. Now it moves into your own sign, one of the things you're going to notice straight away is an improvement in your physical vitality. But you shouldn't spend the extra energy Mars gives you in a sort of scattered way. You really need to be focused. And if you're actually trying to, be too, to take on too much, you could find before this month is out that you're suffering with a fever or a chill or feeling a bit overpowered by things. So don't bite off more than you can chew. But it can help you to concentrate on what's really important and give you a determination to be much more focused on what's essential too. But right at the turn of the year, well, here we have uh, the sun uh, in the part of your horoscope to do with everyday communications. And that's forging an angle with Saturn, the planet of structure. Now, that's basically going to provide a backdrop for you for the rest of 2016. So it's saying to you, by engaging with others in an open way, it could have a beneficial impact on your financial situation. But the key is engagement. It's not about telling people, it's about engaging. There is a difference. And Mercury, the planet of communication, well, that's going to be hugely influential this month because it starts off just about in Capricorn, switches to Aquarius on the 2nd, and then slams on the brakes in a retrograde on the 5th, and then is back into your sector of everyday communications. So when it comes to your mode of transport, your ideas, your belief systems, discussions you have, technology, all of these can come under a massive focus. And I do feel as Mercury goes side by side with Pluto for the last two weeks of this month and squares up with Uranus too, that that tension that I spoke to you about just a while ago is going to be a major issue. If you start getting into battles, um, arguing points, and really trying to get your point of view across too much, you're almost trying too hard, it's about actually prioritising what's truly important to you picking your way through all the tensions, clearing the clutter, not being distracted, and just finding that inner tranquility to focus on what's key. If you can do that, I do feel you may be surprised by your financial position as this new year begins. It may be better than you may have feared. It's true Saturn is going to continue to ask you to sweat your resources in terms of your past skills, 
talents and energies over the next two years. But having Venus there at the start of this year is definitely a great help to you. Now there is, by the 11th, a, a wonderful new moon on the face of it because this is going to help you to think, to, to speak out. But this is clashing with Uranus too. So you can see the pattern. The potential for stresses and strains is still there, particularly if with Mars's help, you almost become more driven to have your say in situations and to be directive towards other people's views. And so it's going to be important to try to de develop a spirit of cooperation. And with Jupiter, the planet of hope, expansion, and friendship in, in the context of where it's located for you at the moment, also putting the brakes on from the 8th, don't take your group, your circle, your association with other people for granted. You need to work at it. So if you do find yourself getting rather entrenched in your opinions, being absolutely certain that this is how things will be, try to think again. But Neptune's going to be a real helpful influence for you from the 11th because she forges a lovely angle to Mars and that can help you to just let go a little bit and find a better balance between yourself, your own inner needs and the more creative side of your nature and put your ideas across with a little bit more finesse in a more nuanced way, be a bit more gentle about the way you come across. Having said that, if you do splash out in any way and treat yourself in the, the January sales as Venus and Saturn clash at the start of week two, you may have to check back a little bit and revise your budget. But then again, you may have encountered someone that you're strongly attracted to and you may make all the steps to try and bring this to life. But perhaps your values are not quite meshing up as they could. By the end of that week, you can actually sort this out, but you need to think outside the box. The sun moves on the 21st into your home sector, and that's asking you to just be more mindful of what all this energy, this electric pulsating energy, is doing to your inner sense of being, your sense of security, peace and tranquility. And you may find yourself withdrawing a little bit and just finding time to think breathe, let your shoulders come down and just reflect on the meaning of life, the meaning of you. There is a full moon on the 23rd and outer pressures and outer demands may be something you don't really want to hear about as you go through this period of just retreating, something that's very important for Scorpios at time, getting more in touch with your inner dimension and not being so caught up in thoughts, electric energy and discussion. That can all be, as I said before, distracting, wearing and stressful. Find that tranquility as this month draws to a close. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Scorpio. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now.